today I'll be talking about Doubting Thomas. Now let me quote, the woman committed the paternity cheat, not the man. He did not force her. It's with her consent. Yes, the man has a moral weakness, but the woman allowed this to happen. Kindly excuse that poor grammar, but that above comment is from answers to an article regarding the now trending matter of the amorous liaison between Adam Nuru, who is the managing director of FCMB, and a former married employee of the bank, Moyo Thomas. Mrs. Thomas apparently admitted to her husband some months ago that their two children were fathered by Nuru. Mr. Thomas apparently went into depression and has died. Now, I'm fascinated negatively, of course, by the comment I've just read out. How does anyone get to thinking like that? I mean, what could be so wrong with society that anyone could be so stupid, ignorant, and even evil? I'll tell you what, I actually, I actually could guess that the writer is capable of rape and abuse of women. Now, there are sins that appear simple to understand, but not to normalize. But a woman bearing children from one man and passing on to another, unsuspecting one, has to be one of the lowest of lows of crime I can think of. How could a normal, healthy individual live with this, or even have done it in the first place? There's a case here for mental instability. I have all my life wondered how men deny their own children for convenience, leaving a lady in shame and confusion. And as a young boy, I could not have foreseen that a woman would be capable of what we now face, and it's apparently rampant. A year or so ago, I posted statistics on Facebook that over a third of cases like these were Nigerian, only a little less than Jamaica. And the women rushed to either defend the action as retaliation for allegedly rampant male infidelity, or as one of those things. I was shocked. They also claimed the statistics were untrue and made up by Western media. If indeed Mr. Thomas became depressed, I'm not surprised. If this crime is only possible from a mentally unstable woman, it stands to reason that the affected man would be badly hit. Why do things happen? Why do these things happen? Some say they would do it for, you know, if their husband is unable to successfully impregnate them. But not to tell him? I've not even wrapped my head around a man asking another to impregnate his wife on his behalf. We live in interesting and perilous times where mad is sane and man is woman. Perhaps these acts have been rampant for a long time and only just been outed in these times where technology really does expose a lot. With no DNA tests centuries ago, these sorts of matters would have gone unchecked and unrecorded. There are times when even our own African tradition allow for situations where children are adopted by a couple when the wife or girlfriend trees and has a child and these cases are settled and life goes on. However, I think it is time to make DNA testing a part of postnatal care, a necessary procedure and a part of the process of obtaining a birth certificate. If the father is unknown, so be it. Personally, I don't see any chaste woman contesting this. It may even nail some irresponsible men who do not want to accept responsibility for their own children. And this will all be more useful than legalizing child rights. But for this trending matter, the jury is out on the acceptability or otherwise of this practice. But the shock value still points to widespread disapproval. Personally, I have little or no respect for Mrs. Thomas, except, of course, this is all just a ruse, a sick one. But no woman should be called a slut until we find an alternative name for men who sleep around. Is that justifying? Because, no, 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 I'm not, it's not justifying anything. Because when this news broke out, I was on social media and I saw the comments. People are vilifying unnecessary women unnecessarily because of a case, just a case of infidelity. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it is the other way around, Society tends to want to accept that the man can go out and do yeah, whatever, that but that the woman, is uh -huh, the woman must maintain that mm, enclave. That link. Who says that? Okay. If the woman mm. is vilified, okay, vilify men also. Vilify men also. Balance it, and okay. then let us have a sane society. Barista Evans, I love it that it is a man who is advocating on behalf of women. Yes. But. 
a popular contraceptive did a survey. Yes. And in 2012, 2014, mm -hmm. 2015, 2019, mm -hmm. Nigerian women came tops mm -hmm. in the most unfaithful wives across the world. With 62%, Thailand trade behind us with 59%, Malaysian women with 39, Russian women with um, 33, and Singaporeans with 19%. And every year when this survey comes out, Nigerian women keep on, you know, denying, oh, it's not true, it's not true. What are the parameters for this survey? The Who empirical surveys? analysis? So they asked, to... they asked women and... Women justify it by saying that we, particularly in Nigeria, we're in a patriarchal society where men are polygamous. And once we decided to go monogamous, one man to one wife, men now marry one, but and still then, have many side chicks on the side. Mm -hmm. Like this is our story now. It was is, that not, is that not injustice? Let, let me quickly chip in here. Uh, we started with the reference to... Uh, Lola Shunei's book, yes. uh, Baba, Baba Shegi's Wives. Wife. What's the wife. story? The story, story is that Baba Shegi could not get his wives pregnant. pregnant. The first wife knew about it, brought a child from wherever, got pregnant by somebody, and then each time he, he brought, others. he tutored others. So this time he said he wants to get, bring somebody again. Before to wife. Try it. <laughs> they now brought the educated Your wife. secret would be... No, because the first three that. wives were illiterate. The fourth right. wife was, was educated. An educated woman. And so they couldn't, you know, tell her... Ah, the the, the same way so, they have manipulated the year. Mm. So they said to themselves, don't worry, after two years of her not she getting better, she will get know it. how to arrange Now, this herself. is the point, and it's a very sensitive one. Mm. I will not condone a woman to go get impregnated by somebody else out, outside and come pin it on your husband. I will not do that. But you see, the ego, our men in Nigeria, for instance, mm -hmm. for, for, for that matter, should learn to puncture their own ego by themselves. Yeah. If you're not fertile, if you have an issue with yourself, tell your spouse. And stop acting How like you're, know? you're the best. You will know. A lot of them don't go. You will know. Because the, the thinking is once there is a couple not having children after three, the five years, the is tradition is that it, it's always the woman. And it's wrong. Most times from what we're seeing, it's not the woman. Yeah, and who it, are it you goes. to say, there is nothing wrong with me, it must be my husband. You can't say you it. Can't so say. a lot of these women will go out and do what they need to do. Then tomorrow the child is looking like yeah, it's beginning the neighbor. To look as if it's a justification. It's not for a what justification. Is going on. But because, you see, mm. we must re, re, re calibrate ourselves as a society yeah, and stop victimizing women. Mm. If we, women can, if your wife can open up to you and both of you can say, you see now we have a problem. I love you so much. I don't want to do this. What do we do? Adoption. Let us adopt. Let us look for solutions. But in the case where you're the one pumping up and feeling that, you see, no, I'm going to marry a second I wife. I disagree or, totally. You know why? Yeah. Patriarchy is perpetuated by women. Most times, it is the mother-in-law who is saying, no, my, uh, my son is okay. That's just one factor. That's just one factor. It's just one of the factors. You are, you are, you are clouting it through. But we and must say what it means that, that we must who, calibrate, recalibrate ourselves as a society. I, 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 I get what you're saying. We must. Um, we must be able to have those difficult discussions. Uh -uh. So it is not always the woman that has a problem when there is a... A, 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 case, of a case of infertility. As a matter of fact, they are equally liable mm. to having those, those, those circumstances. And it shouldn't always be about the, uh, about the lady. Having said that, the specific issue of the FCMB, whatever, we may not have the details. So we I, do I believe, not have the details. I believe yeah. we are just, just talking case generally. Even talking uh -huh. outside of it. We're study. talking outside of uh, it. Yeah. Outside of now, it. I've also seen a few statistics like the, like, like the one you brought up. But the truth is I'm, I'm afraid of those numbers. Why? Because unless, unless I counted? know the sample size, the sampling technique and all those, and see the analysis, the I don't know what you're talking about. The, the so, evidence. In the case of the U.S., for example, it is possible because the U.S., when you're having, applying for an immigration visa, they request that your children undergo DNA. DNA so they have a database 
based on just the people who applied for immigration visa. Okay. So they can make a projection mm. based on that. And but there are lots of homes that have been broken yes. through that process. So, yes. But we, before we, this we need to one. start getting real. Well, my, my, real position is that, my position on, is on that uh, at the risk mm -hmm. of not being seen as someone justifying this, is that if you know as a woman that the children you have is not for your husband, mm -hmm. please... Don't, the discussion. don't don't say it belongs don't to the him. man. Ah. Don't cover it. Mm. Don't stay under any shade of whatsoever. Because as much as those are extremely no, difficult, no, no, I'm, I'm, saying it I'm saying it because extremely no way. No, I'm saying it because I started it out. Is easier not to just people uh, do it? Excuse me. I started that by saying, you see, there are certain things you cannot stop. Do you understand? You can only say that people should not. Why don't you get to, out of that relationship? Going to issues that, that is what that. you want to But you cannot Just stop all of it. it. <laughs> there exactly. are people who likes that kind of lifestyle. Which to kind of lifestyle? To live in denial. I mean, to, to, to involve so in... So people uh, don't like to tell, to uh, like the truth. Fidelity and then hide it and keep hiding it until the whole place is... Oh, uh, in Baba Segi's case, when he found out that all the children were not his own, what did he do? He hid it. He did too. Benny. Mm. So, because, because of his own ego. His own shame. His yes, own, now. Yes, so how, his own how these children that he had trained, how will you now say that he cannot father a child? Let me quickly add that. I like that this FCMB saga, you know, came to the fore. Whether it's true or not, we don't know. Whether it's a corporate... Uh, warfare against uh, FCME, we warfare. do not know. FCME, but this is what I know for sure, that this sort of thing um, happens in it's, banks. It's, it's and I've seen a tweet where somebody said, don't stop with FCMB, come to this bank and come to this bank with specific names. So for me, yeah. as so an advocate that. for women... Are you saying women, it doesn't happen in the civil service? <coughs> no, 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 no. Or it's not in the military? Allow, allow me to make my point. Allow me to make my point. The point I'm making... The point I'm making is there is sexual exploitation in the workplace. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And it's about time that we turned our such light on it and begin to save women and men because some it happens to boss men. women it happens to also men. do it to, yeah. their, to their subordinates. The thing that. is, if it's in your policy, and in fact, it's even part of corporate governance, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. So just as this whistleblower on Twitter or whether Facebook has said, let's turn the such light on. Things like this is mm. not only FCMB. If yeah, it Chuka, indeed Chuka, I want to say something now. No, I was just uh, agreeing with um, with uh, Treasure because somebody mentioned <laughs> somebody mentioned GD in exactly. GT Bank. Thank so you. I went to GT Bank's board of directors to check who was called GD, and I saw the person. Ah. So this matter, yes. yeah. Honestly, um, well, maybe it was a longer name like Babaji Day, but I saw it and I thought, wow, this is, you know. There was but, another bank mentioned. And then and another the bank was mentioned, mentioned, but it wasn't as clear as the GD one was. Mm. So oh, hold on a minute, um, though. You people are disputing the survey conducted by contraceptive I don't dispute companies. it, Juma, I'm with no, you. I, I am the one. Let, let, let Chuka finish survey. making his point. Let Chuka finish making his point. I agree with Juma, that survey, I accept it. I accept the one that I saw. And I think that those who don't want to accept it are the same as these women I, or I, men I, who I deny their you. children. I don't and the women who and we are asking like for more evidence. <laughs> so that is fair. We cannot just swallow it. Okay, we we need evidence. Like that. We need to no, know the parameters no. they use because we know how these people behave. They Which survey. people? No. We want to know. No, no. This survey, <laughs> they asked Nigerian women that, that were married. And mm. because they were anonymous. Mm. You didn't have to write your name exactly. in the survey. Yeah. They were able to yeah. tell the truth. Yeah. And a lot of them had reasons like, oh, my husband does not satisfy me. Oh, my husband cannot actually produce a child. Mm. You know, things mm. like that. Oh, I want to cover my husband's shame. Mm. There's a pastor's Helping wife who said husband. that you know, the husband had been married before, no children, and married her a but young lady. But you get my consent to help me? No, no, did, no you way, even, no. did you disclose so family, that you had a problem? The family members were saying to the wife, the pastor's wife, that better go out. This is what happened to the former wife. Oh, mm. Once she left the pastor, <laughs> that one had a child. Better go out and go and arrange yourself. Oh. Can you mm. imagine? Mm. So, in fact, some of the families even, you know, support and encourage it in Nigeria. Because so it's, then, it's more a shame not to have a child, 
than than to if, actually even, be even without that children. one we need to begin to question it but some of why this, should it be a shame some of, some of these counselors to have a chance. See, if we have to hold women responsible why? for thank you this, Bola, no. thank you very we much we should also Excellent. hold thank the you. counselors responsible there are people it's who a shame to not be married in nigeria uh, why it's a shame to not have I'm children in nigeria why? it's a shame to to be married and not be married again marriage in is not compulsory we need to recalibrate what our values I'm are Bam, i agree oh. it's not compulsory that you must have a child. It's not compulsory that you must be married. If you want it's a optional. child and you cannot have one, you must there not. Are many you, children you waiting for adoption. God did not say you must alter the population continuously. All right, there. we could go on and on. Finally, it's time to draw the curtains of this week's episode of The Advocates. Isn't it interesting? Well, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you can go to plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate NG. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Until next week when we come your way again with five different issues. It's bye-bye from us. Wishing you a beautiful new year. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.